The Summer Olympics may include the world's most popular sports, but the Winter Olympics is significantly more dangerous. A comparatively exclusive event centered around 15 sports, the Winter Olympics has participants reaching higher speeds and spending more time in air than warm weather athletes. Want to know more about the most dangerous Winter Olympic sports of all time? Well, keep watching. First, we have ski jumping. Have you never heard of ski jumping before? It's a winter sport in which competitors ski down a specially designed curved ramp with the goal of achieving the farthest jump. Yes, you heard that right. Jumping on skis. As if regular skiing wasn't hard enough. What's more is that competitors aren't judged on just the distance traveled with the jump. Their aerial style is taken into account as well. Invented in Norway in the 1800s and a part of the Olympic program since the first Winter Games in 1924, ski jumping is the very definition of extreme sports. The sport demands near-perfect control of your posture and movement as you launch through frigid air at speeds reaching 60 miles per hour. A situation where where messing up even slightly can result in concussions, sprained ankles, and knee ligament injuries. Next, Nordic Combined. As if ski jumping wasn't dangerous enough on its own, Nordic Combined takes the danger factor to an extreme by combining cross-country skiing with ski jumping in an epic event especially designed to give audiences a fatal heart attack. The event has been around since the 19th century and was invented by, you guessed it, Norway. Like ski jumping, it has also been on the Olympic program since the first Winter Games in 1924. Nordic Combined is often considered the toughest sport in the Winter Olympics and, like many other highly dangerous and unpleasant things, makes for great TV. The sport requires you to cross-country race on slippery snow and ice, a feat in and of itself even without the other dangerous elements added. Winners are decided based on the scoring system introduced by Norwegian Olympian Gunder Gundersen, making the event an exciting chase where athletes are prone to serious acute and overuse injuries. Now we have ski aerials. The next sport on this list takes ski jumping to the next level. In ski aerials, athletes ski down a steep slope towards a takeoff ramp and perform various tricks like flips and twists once in the air. The sport was first developed by Olympic gold medalist Stein Erikson in the 1950s and is made even more extreme by adding two varieties, upright and inverted. Skiers regularly reach heights like 20 meters during jumps, with current top athletes being able to perform three backflips and four or five twists in one jump. The jaw-dropping stunts required make ski aerials one of the most dangerous dangerous sports in the Winter Olympics, a verdict the International Olympic Committee, or IOC, agrees with. In fact, during the 2014 Sochi Olympics, a whopping 49% of the participants were injured during this event. That is literally one out of every two athletes. Next on our list is Snowboard Cross. The Snowboard Cross, also known as the Border Cross, involves four to six competitors racing down a course on snowboards. What, you don't think that sounds that dangerous? Well, think again. First developed when Steven Ryan Schnaffner and Greg Stump were running out of ideas for Fox TV's Greg Stump's World of Extremes. This winter sport shares a lot of commonalities with motorcycle motocross courses, a fact that can be seen in its name. The snowboard cross course is narrow and treacherous with cambered turns, jumps, berms, rollers, drops, and steep and flat sections incorporated to challenge the athlete's ability to stay in control while maintaining maximum speed. Under these conditions, it's not uncommon for competitors to crash into each other mid-race, something which can be very dangerous and lead to severe injury. During the 2014 Sochi Olympics, 34% of the participants from this discipline were injured. Next, slope-style snowboard. Slope-style snowboarding is a winter Olympic sport that involves competitors riding downhill on a course riddled with a variety of slopes, rails, and jumps. It has its roots in action sports like skateboarding and BMX, but has successfully crossed over into the world of snow sports to become one of the most popular but dangerous winter Olympic sports of all time. The sport became an Olympic event during the 2014 Winter Games in Sochi, Russia, and had an especially high injury rate with 37% of all slope-style snowboard athletes reporting injuries. That is more than one in every three participants. During the event, athletes were judged on a number of factors like originality, execution, height of jumps, difficulty of tricks, and quality of said tricks, and rewarded points based on their performance. The tricks athletes could perform on the course were roughly divided into four categories, spins, grind, grabs, and flips, with racers commonly performing a combination of these tricks. Now we have slope-style skiing. Slope-style snowboarding's equally dangerous cousin, slope-style skiing involves skiing down a hazardous course littered with rails, jumps, slopes, and other terrain park features, all the while performing tricks. These tricks are generally categorized as spins, grinds, grabs, and flips, with top athletes combining all of them to deliver some seriously jaw-dropping moves. The main focus of this kind of sporting event is on tricks 
and not speed, and participants are judged accordingly. Each participant clears the course individually. The sport was first introduced to the Winter Olympics in Sochi 2014 and was a hit due to its epic and gravity-defying stunts, but these stunts come with significant risks, making slope-style skiing one of the most dangerous Olympic events, with roughly 1 in 3 or 31% of the participants getting injured at Sochi. Next, Ski Halfpipe. Ski Halfpipe, or Halfpipe Skiing, is a Winter Olympic sport where an athlete rides a snow ski on a halfpipe. The curved structure commonly seen in gravity extreme sports like snowboarding, skateboarding, freestyle BMX, etc. A part of the Winter X Games since 2002, this sport is particularly dangerous, with athletes hanging in midair for several long seconds as they expertly twist, flip, and turn. The epic ski halfpipe involves participants riding both up and down the curved structure and, like many other events on this list, made its first Olympic appearance at the 2014 Winter Games held in Sochi, Russia. Due to being higher risk than many other sports, helmets are mandatory during ski halfpipe competitions. Despite this, about 26% of participants got injured during the event's Olympic debut in 2014. Next on the list, Ski Moguls. Mogul skiing is a freestyle skiing competition consisting of a timed run down a steep, heavily moguled course from where the sport gets its name. The term mogul originates from the Bavarian Austrian German word mugel, meaning mound or hillock, and refers to the bumps formed when skiers push snow into mounds as they take sharp turns. These bumps occur naturally as skiers use a slope, but can also be created artificially. The artificially created moguls come together to create a sufficiently rough and bumpy field, growing as skiers follow similar paths around them. Due to this bumpy course, mogul skiing stresses technical turns, aerial maneuvers, jumps, speed, etc., on the base of which participants are judged. The uneven course also makes this sport more dangerous than regular skiing. When navigating a slope with such large bumps, skiers cannot turn as they please. The sport also takes a toll on participants' lower bodies, with athletes going uphill a mogul, experiencing severe knee compression, leading to painful ligament injuries. To avoid this, most skiers keep to the downhill side of the moguls they encounter. Out of all the athletes participating in this event at Sochi in 2014, 25% got injured. Next up, Bob Slaying. Bob Slaying, or Bob Sledding, is a Winter Olympic sport that involves a team of two to four bobsledders making timed runs down twisting icy tracks and a gravity-powered sled. The sled covers the narrow tracks at speeds as high as 125 miles per hour, but the chances of injury during this sport are not as high as one would think. In fact, only 18% of the competitors at the 2014 Sochi Olympics got injured during this event. What actually earns this sport its spot on the most dangerous Winter Olympic sports list is the high risk of brain trauma associated with it. When bobsledding around a curve, an athlete feels pressure four times that of gravity. Add to this the fact that athletes are very prone to crashing into the walls if they make a steering mistake while bobsledding, and it's easy to see why so many bobsledders report issues like chronic headaches, heightened sensitivity to bright lights, and loud noises, forgetfulness, and mental fog. And lastly, luge and skeleton. Luge and skeleton are two more sled-based winter sports. Only this time, the sled doesn't have a protective body, and the athletes riding are fully exposed in case of a crash. Significantly more dangerous than bobsleds, luge accounts for the only in-competition Olympic death in the past 50 years, and two of the five in-competition fatalities in all of Olympic history. Despite all this, the instances of serious injury during a luge or skeleton Olympic event are low. This is because anyone who has trained enough to compete as a professional on a sled will likely also be competent enough to keep the sled on the track. And that's a wrap for this video. What do you think's the most dangerous Olympic winter sport? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.